All righty then. seeing by the title of this video in the intro I'm gonna do an actual fucking Zanhu guide here because apparently being rep 70 means you don't know the character but uh yeah I'm gonna do my best to showcase in this video his strengths and weaknesses and give examples of said strengths and witness weaknesses throughout this video and this first little bit here is gonna be the basic bitch shit what you get on heavy parry light parry guard break etc but, with that being said, I hope you're all going to enjoy this little video. I don't know how long this is going to be, but we're going to get right into it. Now, up and coming right here is just your standard heavy parry punish. You get a light attack. That's simple. That's basically for every hero. There are a few ones where it's like JJ where you can get a zone to do more, but you can get either a light attack or a zone on your heavy parry. Guard break is a heavy. does not matter which side. It can be from every side you wish. Next is a light parry. Same thing with guard break. Does not matter what side it is on. It can be whatever side you want. Now this is deflect. Guarantees nothing. It guarantees absolutely nothing. The only thing it does guarantee is stam damage. If that only a little. That is all it guarantees. Next is his zone here to show that you can use your zone to essentially option. But if somebody's an all guard, that shuts that down right there. Next here is unlocking. You can unlock from the left side with a heavy attack or your unblockable heavy attack. Now here's going to show it can be done with the right. However, they essentially have to be kissing you for this to work. Now, as seen here, the unblockable light attack can hit on the right side, but you practically have to be kissing them and it has to be at a certain angle. Other times, it simply just goes right over their head. You essentially have to whiff, to whiff back and go into your unblockable light attack in order to get this to hit. Next is to show the unblockable heavy will go straight over through somebody's character model. It is not reliable to do the unblockable right, unblockable heavy right attack, because this is what happens. Now here's what I like to call the meta, that is Black Prior, Centurion, Warlord, Lawbringer, Kensei, Shaman, and Gladiator. These are the characters I've seen ran the most in tournaments. And this is what I saw being ran in the fray before Centurion's rework, but now that Centurion had his rework, Centurion fits in there perfectly. This is, quote, your go-to heroes for the go-to team that you want to pick. Now, next are going to be the oddballs. These characters can fulfill a role that some can't, or if you just don't know how to play them, the uh, the meta heroes. That is Jang Jun, Shigoki, Conqueror, Warden, Oromusha, and Warmonger. This is if you do not have any of those S tier heroes or meta heroes, or if you do not know how to play them. These can fit in one of those roles perfectly, just because they're either good in the minion lane, good at ganking, or good at anti ganking. Now, Zonhu is what I like to call a glass cannon. That is what he is. You see this mainly in MMORPGs, where somebody can deal a lot of damage but not take it. It's like an ESO, I had a glass cannon healing build surprisingly worked out well but a glass cannon normally falls under high damage and low health that is what a glass cannon falls under normally now 
depends on whose strengths. He has high damage. He can unlock. He has absolute amplitude recovery cancel. He has good feats, unblockable to GB mix-up, and is used to mess with indicators. His weaknesses. He has low health. His unlock only reliably works on the left side. No hyper armor. He is still reactable. He has bad recoveries. His absolute amplitude has a generous GB window. Unblockable heavy mix-up is easily interrupted. He struggles to anti-gank. Has no opener, and on top of that, his deflect does not guarantee anything. For those wondering, absolute, amp absolute Amplitude Recovery Cancel is whenever you see a Zon who back dodge out of recovery. You can kind of, it's kind of like Tiani's Full Like Water, where he back dodges into an attack. That is what it's kind of like. To put that in a picture in your head, it is just a mouthful to say. That is what that is. Now these are showcasing, this is showcasing here his Amplitude Absolute, Amplitude, Absolute Amplitude Recovery Cancel. That's all this is. He faints an attack and he can dodge. He can cancel into a dodge or another dodge attack. This is showcasing one of his weaknesses about his unblockable mix-up. You can just be lighted out of it. There's nothing you can do about it. Next is showing how much of a generous window his uh, apl absolute amplitude recovery cancel has. This is its guard break window. It is a very, very, very generous window. This is going to be showcasing his recoveries. Even if you if you whiff a light attack, the opponent has enough time to guard break you, and you cannot counter guard break. This is just to show that he does have high damage. Alright, here's how you get something off the deflect. It's only from the top. You do your deflect, you do your dash forward heavy, you faint into a GB. That is how you get it. That is the only exception to it. Now here are his out of stand punishes. You can do light, the top heavy. You can do side throw. And heavy heavy or you can do zone and the top heavy now let's look at what Zon who has compared to the meta and whether or not he's a throw pick most meta heroes have hyper armor unreactable offense a bash or an opener safe kits good feats 100 o ganks good unlocks option selects strong out of stand punishes strong out of light out of lock punishes Synergy, mid lane stability, good perks, high damage, hard CC, roaming potential, roll catchers, team fight control, health, can wipe the commander easily, can clear pikemen easily, can deal damage to the ram easily, side points, stability, amazing recoveries, undodgeables, unblockables, and they can stay in their mix ups. Now, what I mean by crowd control is essentially forcing somebody to move to an area. It's like an MMORPGs or Payday 2 where you throw down a Molotov. It forces the NPCs to go to a different direction. That is essentially crowd control in For Honor, except it's with bashes or other feats. The 101 0 gank is simple. It is where the gank is set up to where the opponent does not get revenge. Now, we're going to look at what Zanhu has. And that is high damage, good feats, good perks. He has the Holy Trinity of perks. Decent unlock tech, strong out of stam punish, undodgeables, unblockables, roll catchers, and option select and unblockable mix-up but here's the issue we run into there are just others that simply do his job better all right now here are some of the heroes that do Zanhu's job better that is BP Lawbringer Warlord Shigoki Kensei and JJ now, one thing all those characters have in common compared to Zanhu is they will all do his job better. That being unlocking, ganking, or anti-ganking better than Zanhu. But now, 
Here's the meat and potatoes on how you kind of have to get into the mindset of playing Zanhu and the play style you have to do. Now on the screen here, I'm sure this picture is probably confusing you. Zanhu equals Kensei, but what do you mean? Here's what I mean by this. Zanhu currently is what old Kensei used to be from back in the day. Zanhu is pre-reworked Kensei and you have to play him like pre-reworked Kensei. Now what I mean by that is you are essentially in the back trying to unlock or doing light unblockable over and over and over and over and over just to mess with somebody's indicator. Because you have no hyper on your mix-up, remember. You can get lighted out of your mix-up just by everybody else and your unlocks only work from one side. So your main goal is to essentially just confuse somebody with their indicators and get them to panic. That is what you want to do, because if they panic, then it allows the other heroes that are on your team to capitalize off that panic and any mistakes they make. That is how I've noticed that you, that you could be playing that you could be playing Zonhu, and that's what I've noticed is the best way to play him, because currently, Zonhu does not have a lot going for him in this current moment until he gets any tweaks. Alrighty, now that the technical side is out of the way, we get into gameplay. It's like when watching a PowerPoint at school. You see all the boring stuff in the beginning, and then you finally get to watch the videos to see how it's all done and all that good shit. But yeah, this is the point where I'm going to give my honest opinions about Zonhu compared to the meta. Whether I think you should bring him into a uh, competitive scene or competitive team. And uh, just my overall opinions and possible ways to maybe fix him. Just depends if I want to go in that in depth or not. But like I said earlier... The mindset you want to get into when playing Zonhu is like pre-reworked Kensei. Not a lot of people know what that is. Go back and look at old Frauder gameplay and you'll see how horrible Kensei was. Whenever Kensei got his rework, people sweared to heaven and earth that Kensei was uh, the best thing when he first got his rework back in the day. But that's not what we're talking about. We want to compare him to Kensei and how to play like him. So like I said... Play Zonhu like pre rework Kensei. And what I mean by that, your main goal is to essentially mindfuck someone. That is your goal. You are to be sitting in the back where somebody's external and spamming the light and the heavy unblockable and feigning it over and over to screw with their indicators and to get them to panic. That is your main goal. That should always be your goal if you are able to time up that unblockable heavy with another hero's attacks, like a warlord headbutt or so, do it. But it is going to require a lot of coordination, and it will feed a lot of revenge, especially if winner's advantage is active on the Zonhu. Now, would I bring Zonhu into any, I guess you could say, competitive series? Like Dominion and Breach, if Breach ever goes competitive, I wish it will, but... The uh, competitive scene isn't like Breach, sadly, but... I personally would not bring Zonhu into any competitive, I guess you could say, I guess you could say meta, either meta or scene or team, because currently the go-to team from what I've noticed is Warlord, Kensei, Glad, and Lawbringer, you can throw in BP or Scent or Shaman in there and what needs to be done, or you have the oddballs like JJ. Goki, Warmonger, and whatnot. If those roles need to be filled, or if somebody doesn't know how to play any of the meta heroes, which well, some people just don't know how to play. That's just how it is. They don't know how to play those characters, but they might know how to play those. Those can work. But those oddballs also have a lot of problems with them, and that is why they're oddballs saying they can work, but they do have issues. Like Goki. I mean, come on, that's pretty obvious. Just roll away from Goki. It's pretty obvious. But, Zonhu, I think he is still a throw pick whenever you bring him into the competitive scene. Because Kensei does his job better. If you want to look at what Zonhu could be, look at Kensei now. That is what Zonhu could be. Think of Zonhu as the uh, old grandpa that's twice removed. <laughs> think of it like that. Because Kensei is, in, in a sense what 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 uh, Zanhu is right now that is what Kensei is Kensei is essentially well let me rephrase that old Kensei was essentially Zanhu and I'd like to look up to it to hope that Zanhu does get to Kensei's level but probably not everybody knows about that he he 
ignite bias, right? Ugh. Now, like I said earlier in the video, they're just the heroes do his job better. That's why I think he's a throw pick. He has horrible recoveries too. BP can gank and anti-gank better than him. So can Warlord. So can Kensei. So can Lawbringer. And they can all unlock better. Yes, Lawbringer can unlock. And so can Shaman. If positioned right. They can all unlock better than Zonhu. A lot of the S tier heroes can unlock better than Zonhu. But the main issue with Zonhu is he can't. He can't survive in a gank. When being ganked. Because think about it. If a Zonhu gets revenge. What is that Zonhu going to do 9 times out of 10? Zone. He's going to zone attack. You don't want to zone attack if you're a Zonhu. And you're being ganked against people who know what they're doing. They do exist by the way. These people do exist. People think just because I play Breach. I don't run into competitive teams. I do every single day. Such as the Horde and the Mire. We run into them nearly every single day. But you never, ever, ever want to throw a zone attack as Zonhu would be in gank because that shit is easy parry bait. And god forbid they run JJ on their team and they choke away all your revenge and you're next to a wall. <laughs> it just comes down to who does the character's job better. That's what it comes down to. And the recoveries. You gotta look at if the negatives outweigh the positive or if the positives outweigh the negatives. Whereas in my book, <laughs> these negatives outweigh his positives. And you gotta compare him to the rest of the meta. That is what you do. That is what they did in Overwatch when I was playing Overwatch. When a character got a buff or a rework or a ability cooldown, a uh, nerf or a buff or just a whole ability rework or hero rework, you would compare that hero to the meta. Which I believe now is like shield meta still. It is still shield meta. But that's what you do. You compare the two char you compare the character to the best. Because that's what you want to do. You want to see if this character is strong. And what better way to see if the character is strong than to compare them to the rest of the meta heroes. And if that hero cannot hang with the meta heroes or do those job that job better, then that character is not strong. And I firmly believe that. Alright, now don't get me wrong. Sanhu has some pretty good feats. Don't get me wrong by that. He has Bounty Hunter. He has his Fire Trap, which guarantees 40 damage. He has Winner's Advantage. Nuka Kubi. And the bow... Last laugh, and his Taco Bell, as I call it, the Scorching Dolge. Those are really, really good feats. But the Scorching Dolge, you can kind of... It's just situational, depending on how open the map is and where you think the final team fight is going to go down. But, yeah. He does have really good feats, and he has what I like to call the Holy Trinity of Vanguard perks, which is Devour Endurance Fresh Focus. And that stacks with Bounty Hunter. That's the Holy Trinity of Vanguard perks. He does have these things, but it's just these... These low recovery, not these low recovery, these low recoveries, these bad recoveries that he has, and that the fact that his unlocks only work from the left side, it's not even reliable and viable to do them on your right side. That's a problem because if only one side of your unlock works, there's a problem. You don't, you don't want to be using the right. You can be directly in front and directly in front of somebody like y'all saw in the beginning of the video. And the unblockable right attack will still go through their body. Just goes right over their heads. Now his feats are good, but like towards the like comparing him to the rest of the meta, their feats simply outdo his. Like Umbra, Oathbreaker, Juggernaut, Fire Flask, Second Win. Well, second win is banned in tournaments, but let's just say out of tournaments, second win. Stuff like that. Haymaker. Haymaker is also a really, really good one as, too, as well. Fear itself. Morale booster. The meta just simply has better perks than him. Smoke bomb. Don't forget about smoke bomb. And healing banner. Those those feats and perks, they all, they just, they're just better than his. And the heavy perks, like uh, Bastion, Last Stand, Vengeful, those are obviously better than Zonhu's. Because everybody loves that juicy damage reduction, but compared to everything else, Zonhu's whole kit, his feats, his purse, compared to the meta, they beat Zonhu. They beat Zonhu in terms of reliability and strength. Because the thing is also with Zonhu, to make him that full out glass cannon, you have to get all of your feats. And in a competitive scene, that is not even guaranteed most of the time. 
you can get them in Breach, in normal Dominion, but how often is the team just going to let you farm B? Or the minion, or the minion lane near the ramp? How often are they going to let you farm B or the ram lane? That's not going to happen a lot of the times. And yeah, it just comes down to that. Because the, the meta heroes just do Zanhu's job better. Now, if Zanhu had a viable opener, and his deflect actually guaranteed something instead of the uh, dash heavy faint and guard break, then it'd be alright. Like, you could make his deflect light somebody on fire. He's about fire, you know. You could do stuff like that. But, yeah. Whereas the meta just does his job better. There's no way around it, really. You could time up the unblockable heavy with somebody, like a Warlord Super Armor, but... Why would you do that when you could just get, like, a Musha and have the Musha do his infinite chain heavy when the person's stuck in the crashing charge? Does it better? And it just comes down to the issue that other heroes do the job better. And I'm sorry. That's just how it is, and that's my opinions on it. That's why I think Zanhu is weak in a throw pick. Because Zanhu is going to get absolutely bullied at high level, and he does. And the only reason why you see me be able to do what I do on stream is just because these people don't know how to fight Zanhu. Or they don't know his weaknesses. They don't realize all that they can do. This is also to show like other people. There is a lot you can do against a Zonhu. There is a lot. A lot of people think he's impressive with these light attacks and all that. But he's not. He's really not. Peel all that away. And look at what you can do. And you'll see his flaws. Because currently. He needs something to make him better. But. This guide was also to help you get in the mindset of how to play him. And the technicality. Like I said, play him like pre-rework Kensei. That is how I played him. And that was the best result from what I've had. If you play him like pre-rework Kensei, I think you'll be fine. But if you try to be all aggressive, I'm sorry. Your heavies, your unblockable heavies, you're going to get hit out of that. And your light attacks are still going to get parried. I'm sorry, those unblockable light attacks are still reactable. I hate to break it to you. They are still reactable. I know a lot of people are going to get upset about that. They're reactable. Like, I'm sorry. They either need to get faster, which I really hope they don't. I don't like fast lights. Or they need to do something else to Zonhu or give Zonhu a full-out rework. Because he is a throw pick. And I firmly stand by it. And I'm hoping me showcasing the strengths and, w strengths and weaknesses and comparing them between the meta... And I hope it just gives a little bit more light onto the scenario to where my way of thinking comes from. Because I was an offensive lineman. I think technical. I'm very hypothetical. I think of every little detail. Like in the O-line, you don't just tell us to run a straight line and take a right. You tell us, run a straight line, keep your feet here, don't forget to turn here, turn your body this way, get your foot there, come to this body level. You gotta be really, really technical. And that's how I am. I'm just really, really technical and hypothetical. And just like a sense of order, you know. Just explaining every little detail. Because that's also what we did. We explained every little detail and compared our strongest to the weakest. That is what you do. Or if somebody new comes in, you compare them to your roster. This new player coming in, you don't compare them to the weakest in your roster. You want to compare them to the strongest in their roster to see where they stand. Now if they're able to hang with the strongest, then you can put them in the strongest. Then if they don't hang with the strongest... That's when you then move in to the rest of the meta, or the rest of the heroes. Because Zanu ain't no A, he ain't no B, he ain't no C. He's D. He is tied for one of the worst in, in the game, in my opinion. I'm sorry if that gets you upset. That's just how I think, and I'm hoping this video explained my way of thinking. And how I look at other heroes in terms of uh, strengths, weaknesses, and tears. And the meta hero tier list or just in the for honor tier list Alrighty, now with all of that out of the way and all in said and done like i said earlier i hope this explains my way of thinking or at least lets people try to understand where my way of thinking comes from and that this guide is helpful to people because zon who is a difficult character to play and a very stressful one to play and it requires a lot of game sense and knowledge because everybody loves knowledge yeah. Ugh, but yeah, this is a long one. A very, very long one. I started recording this video at 9.30 in the morning, or making it at 9.30 in the morning, 
and it is now 6.04 p.m. at night. My throat is drier than the California wildfires and the Sahara Desert. So, yeah. <laughs> but I hope this guide was helpful at least some bit to others because uh, Zon, who is a very cool character aesthetically, has a lot of good fashion. And the Wulin are just in, in general cool and have good fashion and are used to style on people. But yeah, with that being said, I hope this guide has helped you or at least understood some of the character's strengths and weaknesses or it's kind of, I guess you could say in a sense, opened your eyes and uh, how you should look at a character or just how you could compare a character to the rest of the meta. But yeah, I appreciate everybody who's watching this and if you've watched this, watched this all the way through, good job. You get a cookie because this is a long video and I know not a lot of people like to sit through uh, I guess you could say PowerPoint like videos in a sense or where it's all technical because I know some people they just want to see either gameplay kill streaks or memes and I try to do my best to add all those into my videos including my guides but now with that being said I hope that every single one of y'all enjoyed I am sorry for no Nuxia live stream tonight because I'm tired <laughs> after making this there might be one I don't know it just depends upon how I feel whenever this goes live and I'm feeling pretty confident about this but yeah I appreciate everybody appreciate everybody for watching don't forget to subscribe for more if you enjoyed and I'll see you next time my absolutely wonderful and adorable seal babies